Hello there, it's James B. Welcome to my podcast. Uh, this week I have a very special guest. She is famous for TV, film, uh, theater, cartoons, you name it, voiceover or acting, you're not going to get better than Jane Eastwood. So she's coming up on the show in just a little bit. We'll talk about her career. We'll talk about Second City and Godspell and all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, I want to thank some sponsors right away. Barbarian Steakhouse, 7 Elm Street, amazing food. And I got to tell you, Jane Eastwood, she is going to be my guest in the wine cellar in about 10 minutes from now. Uh, they have a great wine list. Ch check it out. Uh, you can book that for private events. Uh, bring your wallet. This is not a uh, Chuck E. Cheese, bring the kids. No, this is a classy wine cellar, but a great place for a private party. I've thrown a few in there. Uh, Barbarian's Steakhouse, 7 Elm Street. Once again, if you want a great meal, you can go there for lunch, go there for dinner. Let me know how it turns out. JamesB.ca and uh, you can also email me there if you want to know anything about Beeline Music Adventure Tours. Yes, I sponsor myself on this podcast. I just feel the need to tell you that I'm having some amazing times right now. Uh, just took people down to see Kurt Elling in Niagara Falls. Before that, I took people to Cuba. Coming up, I've got New Orleans, May 9th, going down for five days. And uh, I believe at the end of August, I will be taking 20 lucky people to Dracula's castle for a concert. Yeah, we're going to Romania. Barbara Lika will be my host. I'm working on that right now. Don't have a lot to tell you yet, but uh, if you're interested, jamesb.ca is where you can reach me and find out all about that. Uh, barberfinancial.com. Captain Paul Barber will tell you what to do with your finances. If you need some advice, it could be just your own personal finances, could be a company, but he's a smarty pants. I'll tell you how smart he is. Nine years ago, we were sailing. There's a group of us and Paul said, what do you think about an app where you could like share rides with people? And everybody said that was a terrible idea. Oops, Uber, sorry about that, Paul. Maybe you should have smarter friends and you'd be a millionaire by now. Actually, he probably is already a millionaire. Anyway, he'll look after your finances. He's having a great time. And uh, barberfinancial.com is where you get that. And uh, then, I guess I'm just going to say quickly, quick thank you to everyone who's gone to Patreon. Um, there's been about uh, 20 of you so far. And thank you to every person. Uh, whether you donate 5 bucks or 20 bucks a month, every bit helps. And I really appreciate it. Keep in mind it's American, so if you're giving me 5 bucks, it's 650. Giving me 10 bucks, it's closer to 13. That kind of thing. All right, now let's get on to the clubs right now. Old Mill Toronto, tonight. Uh, pianist, composer, singer Kathleen Gorman just bumped into her at a party last week. She is the real deal. She writes some great music, lovely voice, and one heck of a piano player. Jake Kaufman, Nathan Hiltz Quartet are tomorrow. Jake is the uh, great grandson, no, the grandson of Mo Kaufman, the great flautist, and uh, Jake himself, a really great flute player and sax player, and uh, of course, uh, Nathan Hiltz, great guitar player. So it's a quartet that's happening uh, uh, tomorrow night, and then next Wednesday, the 27th, um, Russ Little is back, the great trombone player with a killer band. That's the one, I really have that in my in my calendar. I'm pretty sure I'm free on Wednesday the 27th. I want to be at the Homesmith Bar at the Old Mill Inn to see this amazing, amazing trombone player. And what a sweet guy, too. Um, then, I should tell you what else is coming up Thursday. Another talented musician. He likes cozy rooms, but he also plays all over the place. Roy Thompson Hall, Madison Square Gardens. No, no, what is it? Uh... Uh, Carnegie Hall, that's it. He must have practiced a lot to get there. Uh, Bob DeAngelis, he's playing clarinet and sax. He's got a killer band and he's there uh, next week as well. All the listings are at oldmilltoronto.com. Just click on Homesmith Bar. Shows are uh, $20 minimums, no cover. So just have a couple of drinks and you're good to go. And all the shows are 7.30 to 10.30. Now at Lula Lounge, uh, you want to get in there early, 6.30, 7 o'clock. Uh, get in there before 7 because you're going to enjoy Roberta Hunt tonight while you're having dinner. Uh, then uh, it's followed by Cafe Cubano and DJ Suave. So there's dance lessons, DJs, live bands, all kinds of stuff happening there. It's going to be a ton of fun. And uh, Saturday, it's a tribute to Frankie Ruiz at night. 
And during the day, African drumming workshop at noon at Lula Lounge. There's so much going on there all week. But one more thing I want to bring attention to, and that is a, a concert that raises money for the Children's Aid Foundation. Um, uh, this is Melissa Lauren, and she's put together a great lineup. Lily Frost, Barbara Leica, Ori Dagan, Johnny Mac, Stephen Tate, so many people. And that's happening next week as well. But check out lula.ca for all their listings and make yourself a plan to get down there this week if you can. Jazz Bistro, tonight and tomorrow, big deal. I tell you, whenever Ray Downs comes to town, it's a big deal. You'll see a lot of jazz veteran musicians and jazz fans from back in the day. They have seen him for decades, and they're not going to miss this show. I suggest you don't miss it. And uh, try the halibut. I'm going to say that every time I talk about Jazz Bistro. It's my favorite thing over there. Uh, also, Robert Scott is playing solo piano uh, during the dinners for people that are going to the Mervis show. So that means you can go down there, have a meal any time of the week, see Robert Scott on the piano, and there's no cover for that one. Hughes Room Live. Mm -mm. Again, so much going on in one week. It's insane. Michael Jerome Brown is on stage this evening. Now, the Globe and Mail said uh, he's arguably the finest acoustic blues artist in the country. And who am I to argue with the Globe or the Mail? Um, so good good on that. And then keyboard player Matt Wiedinger uh, is performing his tribute to Van Morrison tomorrow and next weekend. Oh my God, one of my favorites. I adore this woman. Mia Sheard is playing. Whew, she is so beautiful. Her voice is so haunting and so authentic and so sincere and sometimes kick-ass. She can be sensitive. She can be harsh. Uh, she's a true artist and she's doing a tribute to Joni Mitchell. Uh, two nights next week, so you want to see that for sure. And now between now and next weekend, there's a whole bunch of other stuff. Another one I want to mention is Romani Jazz, Robbie Botosh and his friends getting together at Hughes Room on Monday, February 25th. Uh, Ninad Bogdanovic, uh, he is a fantastic singer and a really sweet dude. And he's just one of remarkable voice. It's something you've never heard before, I can guarantee it. George Kohler is on the bass. Uh, Robbie's cousin, Joseph Botosh, on guitar. And, of course, any fans of Robbie probably already have their tickets for this. You better get them in advance. I know it's only a Monday night, but I'm sure it's going to sell out. Amazing music. Brand new style of gypsy jazz or Romani music. Uh, something really new coming down the pike on uh, next Monday night. Uh, also, I should mention the Tiki Collective, my band. We're having a winter party. In fact, it's winter. What winter? Because it's going to be hot music. Uh, all the usual suspects, a ton of singers. Uh, there's usually about 10 singers and a six-piece band. So that's going to be a ton of fun. March 5th at 8 p.m. at Hughes Room. You can get tickets right now, HughesRoomLive.com. And finally, over at the Rex, lots of great stuff. Check out their website. A few names coming up this week. Uh, Bernie Sinensky Group, Dave Turner Quartet, Barry Romberg. So much happening at the Rex. And again, their full calendar at therex.ca. I'm talking fast because I can't wait to get to Barbarians. We're going to have a nice little meal, and then as soon as we're done eating, we're going to pop down into the wine cellar, and we will talk. Here comes my guest, the one and only Jane Eastwood. Cheers. Cheers. Yay. I was always drinking with you. Mm. I've said that about eight times. Mm. Obviously, I have a drinking problem. <laughs> well, you know what? I really believe that we were going to be sitting here drinking a big bottle of Margot from some fancy year. Yeah. Um, but... You are off to go pick up an award. Well, yes, I'm getting the um, Award of Excellence from ACTRA this year. God bless them. I'm a reluctant recipient, I can tell you that right now. Because <laughs> if people really knew what I was like, <laughs> I don't think they would do that. Well, you know the what amount, I mean. Just, I've been around a long time. The amount of all. voice work you have done, no one actually knows unless they go to IMDb or something. Oh. You, your voice is everywhere. Well, that's good. good as an know. actress, people <laughs> recognize you, but, but as a voice, I don't think half the people know how much work you've had over the years. Also, my voice is very recognizable. Like, I'll be standing in a, in a grocery line at Fortino's and I'll say something and people go, man, I know that voice, I know that voice. Like that. And then they, they say, and so what have I seen you? And I said, I have no idea. <laughs> and that I, character, I they, as soon as you say that, no they idea. go, my pet monster. I, oh, right. <laughs> you sound like the character in that one. Oh, that's like, really funny that you said that. De depending <laughs> on which voice you have. But, but really again, funny. you're an actress first, voice actor second. Oh, but or anything I can get. Right, but yeah. the voice is so um, 
it's so different. How how is that a different gig for you than acting? Wow, because you got to act with your voice, man. That's uh, that's that's a huge transition. I can remember Woody Allen when he did Ants. He said, "This is the hardest job I've ever done in my entire life," because you can't you, you can't shrug. You know what I mean? Like you, ha everything has to be jumping the off the voice. page. Yeah, yeah, jumping off the page, and yet you don't want to push. You want to you want to relax, and it's it's it takes a while to get really good at it. I found when I first started doing it, I said, "Oh, jeez, I was sweating in the studio." You know what I mean? And now I'm just a lot happier, and I also I get cast for the type of thing that I would do. You know what I mean? Right. Well, you don't I, have to go so against many type because there's so many gigs there's, for you, and there's yeah. so many of us out there. You know, I mean, so you right. want a Chinese girl, you hire a Chinese girl. You know what I mean? Thank yes. God. So, yes, yeah. yes, right. You don't have to sit there pretending that yeah, you're that I have an Asian accent. <laughs> <Right>. I <know. laughs> Probably the seventies, but not anymore. Exactly. That's true. Um, if you were, if you were uh, to pick your own part, is there is there a type of character or or film for voiceovers in particular that you would want to do? Is there something out there? Well, I mean, I, I. I just like to play myself, but but more. You know what I yeah. mean? Like I love yeah. playing the kind of just the sort of rough gal in the neighborhood, that kind of go, who's yeah. just you know just throwing off bon mots and. But you've you also know. done a whole bunch of Nelvana uh, uh, animated sh films. So uh, there's some animals involved there. A lot, yeah. in fact, so yeah. many bears. Not just Nelvana, but like <laughs> Berenstain Bears, Rupert yeah. the Bear, yeah. uh, ba uh, Babar. Well, that's an elephant. I but, did do Babar. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, another bear for Nirvana. Oh, Care Bears. Oh, Care Bears. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't in Care Bears for very long, but you, no, I mean I play. Um, I'm doing a thing called Esme and Roy now, and I play like a monster. I'm Granny Monster. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're still just using your voice. You're anthropomorphizing these animals, so it's kind of like the same thing. That's right. Yeah. Like like Sugar Bear from Sugar Crisp. Exactly. You just yeah, yeah. Make him feel real. Yeah, I exactly. thought Sugar Bear was a real actor when I was a little kid. Well, there you go. <laughs> and you were hoping you could meet Sugar Bear. Yeah. yeah. And I don't. Yeah. Why, why doesn't he get out of commercials and do some <laughs> films? I love Sugar Bear. That's adorable. <laughs> So of the people uh, you worked with, I'm thinking of the early days. Um, uh, okay, going down the road. Mm -hmm. uh, the late great Kale Chernin loved yep. her. Great um, girl. That movie was so important for Canadian culture, and I know the story of someone moving from the East Coast to Toronto to make yeah. it big. But mm -hmm. what do you think? Was there was there a sense when you were doing this that this was going to be an important movie, or were you just making a movie? Well, we thought we thought it was important because we thought the script was sensational and it was so real, and not a lot of work like that was being done in Canada. Well, very little. I mean, it was either Shaw or Stratford, and there were a few theaters um, around. This is like way before I did Godspell. I was just getting right. into the business and. Um, this wonderful acting coach from New York, Eli Rill, opened his own studio in Toronto, and it was like the studio in New York. What was the name of that acting studio? Yeah. Was it just the, the, the one that Marilyn Monroe went to? Yeah. The studio, yeah. Well, he was one of the teachers there, and he just opened up this whole fabulous, real, real technique for acting for us. So the three of us auditioned for it, I feel like I was on the street auditioning for it. And um, we all got it, uh, uh, Paul Bradley, Doug McGrath, and myself. We were all from Eli's studio. Mm. And uh, so I think, I think we just felt that we were finally getting to do the kind of work that we really wanted to do. Mind you, I got paid 600 bucks for it. And it took six months to shoot. <laughs> oh my God. It took six months no to shoot. No one knows that side of it. Oh yeah, I mean, it was a long time ago. And I'm pretty sure I was modeling at the art college to stay alive at the same time. <laughs> I saw some pictures. Oh, never mind. Uh, I, I believe you never were. Never you mind. <laughs> I, um, how about, no, I didn't see those pictures. Oh, I'm just saying I saw some very beautiful pictures. Um, what about Godspell? I mean, who knew, amazing. who knew that that was gonna shoot the careers off of some of the most famous people ever to okay. come from Canada. Marty Short, Eugene Levy, Gilda Radner, Andrea Martin, Victor Garber was our Jesus. Right. Paul Schaefer was our band leader. Right. And, and I think Michael Kamen played saxophone. Yes, I think he did. Who went yeah. on to do the biggest soundtracks in the world. Yeah. Oh, I see him. I didn't actually know that. <laughs> yeah. I didn't actually know that. So that's another thing. I, I, I met about. him before he died. We had dinner once and wow, he was the most humble that. Canadian you'd ever want to meet. Wow. 
And he had done the hugest soundtracks. And he was sitting with Ryuichi Sakamoto and Ennio Morricone. Oh my God, <laughs> you're saying names that I don't know, but that's okay. Oh, oh, <laughs> sorry, they're the other two soundtrack geniuses oh. <laughs> in the world. You'd know Ennio because he did uh, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Oh, there you go, and, Jesus, Murphy. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so Godspell was another one of those things like, okay, this oh, is And also cool Garber, story. that's pretty interesting because Victor would have been a very, I'm guessing, a serious actor. Definitely totally a serious definitely actor. Definitely not he's... the comedian of everybody else in the group. And But he, we had, we all had so much fun together. It yeah. was insane. We really became a family. And sadly, a lot of us broke up with our partners because of Godspell. Because nobody, no relationship could stand up to like what we all had with I each know other. what you're saying. <laughs> It was it was terrible. I, mean, I felt so bad, but but um, it was actually beautiful we're still close. because we're still it's really close. life changing yeah. moments. And you know who uh, still keeps us really close is Marty Short. He's unbelievably sentimental about the Godspell cast. Oh, well, he see he and Eugene Levy came from McMaster in Hamilton. And they drove in, you know, for the audition, and yeah. they were sitting right behind me. And just, you know, Marty had like his ear, <laughs> Eugene had an afro out to there. And they were adorable. They became my best friends. Wow. And, you know, I've heard so many wonderful stories about Martin Short. Oh. Um, he really is like family man first. 100%. And then extended family, like you're saying. Uh, yep. And then the career is down the road later. Although, oh. by his talent, you would think that that's all he could ever dream and sleep about. But, but no, it's actually... Well, he says he really understands about balancing life. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? And he and his um, wife, Nancy, had a fantastic marriage. And they, you know, I mean, sometimes they would take care of Andrea's boys because that Andrea's um, uh, Nancy's sister-in-law. Andrea and Martin was married to Bob Dolman, who was Nancy Dolman's brother. Brother, right? Yes. So wow. they, so they're related, um, which is lovely, and they all adore each other. So yeah, I remember they. Um, Big time, big time family people, and Marty has a cottage in Muskoka now, so right. I go over there sometimes, except when he has the A-list up. <laughs> <laughs> if Tom Hanks is there, I'm not going over. Because <laughs> I'd be just like, bad, bad, bad. I don't know what to say anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. you could paint your face like a basketball or a soccer ball and hide in the corner, and he'll come and talk to you later. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Um, when you think about those days, that was before Second City, right? That was just before Second City. Right. And then you really, I guess that... And that was crazy, too. That, that, that was nuts. You would have been immersed in Second City. I saw you in Second City, and I'm guessing, was it the 70s? The 70s, early 70s. Yeah. yeah I was, I was a original. tourist. I was a teenage tourist. Oh, really? With my parents. Old Fire Hall, right? That's... Well, you no, actually... No, even before that. This, there was one... Um, theater before that and it was on Adelaide right but that got shut down because we didn't have a liquor license and it didn't go that well okay so my phone's ringing I'm awfully sorry <laughs> you know what I thought <laughs> I actually thought it was the music being piped in from above we are in the wine cellar of Barbarian Steakhouse so I had a feeling that it probably wouldn't be music piped in but you never know I'm trying to get to my phone so I can turn it off I'm so sorry okay goodbye <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean if you have to answer it we'll there. get you no, on no, camera okay. Okay. I think it's Actric, God bless him. They're the best union in the entire world. Yeah. I've They're heard amazing. great things about Actra, uh, and especially uh, some people like Molly Johnson on my mm -hmm. show a couple of weeks ago, she said, uh, like, she's in Actra. Yeah, she's because active. They look after. They yeah. look after her. Yeah. Uh, the, their, the benefits and how they look after well, people. Well, the musicians should love Actra because we all went to Ottawa about this, I think it was a. C-32 bills right. to make sure that musicians were getting residuals, right. especially the stuff that was all out on the internet and so oh, Right, yeah. actor actually fought for musicians. Yeah. For a dip for the TMA union. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah um, So so uh, back to Second City. So you oh, went yeah. and then you became um, I would say an irregular guest But yeah. but fairly right. often on SCTV. Uh, yeah, really not much of a guest I think it was just because we were friends and Joe Flaherty's my brother-in-law I yep. married David Flaherty, yep. and the thing is, I did quit Second City, because improvising was really hard for me. It was sort of like, yeah, okay, I'll be the wife, but I was, my God, you should have seen the cast. Well, yep. It was Joe Flaherty, who's one of the best improvisers of all time, yep. of, really, of all time. He just, 
his creativity on stage is his, just insane. His raising of an eyebrow yes. will make everyone laugh. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow he makes a stage feel very small and very intimate, yeah. no matter how big it is. But, yeah. And he's writing the scene, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. and they're all following Joe. I can remember John Candy, Gilda Radner, and Danny Aykroyd were all being interviewed by Rolling Stone magazine, and they all said they owed everything they knew about comedy to Joe Flaherty. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. So he so he was the kind of guy, like he was the only one I was comfortable with on stage because he was so confident. He could he could set you up. Like he would set me up to get a laugh. Right. But the rest of them were just like, just powerhouses. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. I, I couldn't keep up. So I left. <laughs> I left. <laughs> I said, I'm just going to be a Canadian author. And yes. Do some theater, which well, I did for a while. Right, and you did a bunch of theater. Is there a favorite between, you know, whether it's Stratford or or or, or here in Toronto? Was there a favorite thing you like to do when you when you move from from a po post SCTV and yeah, Hair right. yeah. uh, Gospel Godspell? When you went past that, is there a favorite place? Well, uh, Tarragon was wonderful, and because they were doing like new Canadian productions, and that yeah. was the stuff that I was interested in, mm. because. Um, because I'm so contemporary. I'm, I'm not quite right for Stratford or Shaw. Right. I have well, a, a languid way of speaking. You know what I mean? But um, this is what I thought, is that you're, you're, people think of you always as either a, like a comedic actress or a voice mm -hmm, actress, mm -hmm. but the serious side of you is still contemporary. Well, it is, and I mean, I did a, a, I'm not really sure what you meant by that, but I'll just go on anyway. <laughs> well, well, what I mean is that, that you would play, uh, um, I could see you in a kind of a death of a salesman, well, Martha I, Henry oh, type oh, role. Absolutely. I mean, I did Night Mother, and um, Night Mother's a pretty heavy, heavy duty role, and uh, that was received very well. And, and I had been doing comedy up to that point, but you know what they say, if you want a great, tragic actor, ask a comedian. Right. Because comedy's just this side of grievance. Yep. And comedians have that observation of, you know, the human condition that some other people don't really explore. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. So they're I like not that. they're not different they're not different at all, in my opinion. I was in a hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, and uh, in, in the in the bar and on the big screen was a new version of the Rocky Horror Picture Show, oh. <laughs> and there you were. Was I on the bill? In Toronto's <laughs> Casa Loma. Um, what was your character? Well. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I loved the, it, but I don't I remember know. that from the original. I was the only new new character in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah. And because Tim, oh, Tim, what was Tim's last name? The original star of Rocky Horror? Uh, Richard uh, uh, O'Brien? Oh, no. Tim Curry, Tim, Tim Curry. Curry. Who's who played the narrator, yes. right? Yeah, but he was in the new one. He was originally Frankenfurter. But yes, yeah. and he was so great as Frankenfurter. He sure he was. was. A wonderful actor. Unbelievable. But he had had sadly had had a stroke. Tragically had a stroke. So he was in a wheelchair. But he wanted to be a part of it. So they thought it'd be great if he was the narrator. But even talking wasn't very easy for Tim. So they decided to give him a butler, and I was the butler. <laughs> And I think the only reason I got it is because I could scream really loud. It was like, <laughs> there's like, I don't know, this, this sound that happens and the butler screams and that was me. And so that was it. It and was Tim, very Tim, funny. It was really fun. And Tim Curry was so lovely to me. He was just adorable. The beautiful And man. Lou Adler was back. Like it was, it was really the people that made that Rocky Horror that said, yeah. hey, let's try this. Yeah. yeah, it was really fun. Amazing. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get to be a part of I have, all my parts are kind of small, but a lot of them are in like really cool things. Right. Like in Chicago, I was in Chicago, little wee tiny part, like so small. Like if I was somebody was coming to see the movie, man, I say, oh there I am. Okay. <laughs> or there I am. Yeah. All right. Are they, okay, that's it. <laughs> right. Uh, th there was another. Oh, uh, my big fat Greek wedding too. Yeah, I did both of those. Yeah, yeah. Uh, both of them. Right. Yeah. The, uh, um, I'm trying to think of some. Well, what, what's a, what's a cameo where you felt like you got like you learned something from doing a cameo? I don't know. I no? don't really know how to answer that. Actually, I just wondered no, if there might be I, no. Yeah, not that I've learned. I mean, I learn something from everything I do. Yeah. You know, um, be better. <laughs> don't be quite as big. Um, yeah, I don't know how to answer that. I'm awfully sorry. Well, that's probably the best thing you could answer is. You're doing so much theater in the past that when you get onto film, 
can be a bit big. And it's not even TV, now it's film. Yeah, so that's true. So it's, it's really difficult to go, oh, one raised eyebrow speaks volumes. Unbelievable, and sadly, <laughs> my face has a life of its own. It just, I don't know what it's doing half the time. <laughs> But which is why I love doing um, kids TV because nobody ever has to say, Jane, could you bring it down a little? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. As and, less is less. <laughs> and voiceovers, you do have to think a lot more about yeah. it, but there's no animated. but there's no more worrying about levels. That's, That's for sure. That's definitely more animated. Yeah. Now, a, quick, a couple of quick uh, Toronto questions, because I love talking about this city. Oh, I love Toronto. You are now in Hamilton. Yes, yeah. And you have a place here in Toronto. But yes. tell me about... Uh, how you've seen the changes you've seen in Toronto in the last 20 years? Well, you see, I'm 72 years old. And outside of like going on safari with you, yeah. you know what I mean? I just don't feel like I really fit into the, the whole scene in Toronto so much anymore. And I'm not a big socialite. Like I don't go to galas and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm finding it a little bit crowded. Right. Not, not as gentle as it used to be because I have like great memories of Toronto in the 70s when I go to the pilot or, you know, Georgia Spaghetti House. And right. My job was a lot younger then. It's but see some great jazz and see some chill great out. Yeah. Jazz, like you wouldn't believe the yeah. town tavern. And so that. Guido Basso, that, yeah. Mo Kaufman, Don Franks, all of these yeah. people. Yeah. 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 I remember watching Don Franks singing at the town tavern and I was 100% in love with him. <laughs> Man, I just thought he was the greatest. Yeah. He was so cool. Um, so, so I'm not putting down what the scene is in Toronto now, but there's something about Hamilton now which reminds me of what Toronto was like in the 70s. Right. Moving from like a it's not so interesting place to like, whoa, that's open. Wow, look at that person. Oh, look, look at that restaurant. Hey, that, and, and people my age are going out yep. in Hamilton. Right. I think more, maybe more than, you know, I can mm -hmm. be just talking through my, the top of yeah. my head, but yeah. Um, yeah. I, it's, it's slower, it's gentler. Which, for and you get to watch good. it building. And you get to watch it like everything that's happening is cool. You know what I mean? You like, know, I love to go to a party early. Yeah. I like to do a circumference idea. of the area to know where the fire exits are, where are the bars. Maybe they have some free champagne or oysters <laughs> in one area. I just like to know the lay of the land immediately. And then I watch the club fill up. Yeah. And I get to meet people. And if somebody says, where's the washroom, I actually already know, even yeah. though I have nothing to do with the party. <laughs> so your idea of being in Hamilton and watching Hamilton it's so become exciting. alive yeah. like it is. And in the last five years, I've seen a lot of people moving out there. It's very exciting. Yeah. Out of necessity, right? I mean, yeah, right. Because I'm renting in Toronto, and if my landlord decides he wants that house, where the hell am I going to go? Yeah. So I bought like this little groovy little place down in North Hamilton. I'm near the water. I can see the mills. I can wave to the mills. I see the flame. Yeah. But I, honest to God, I would rather look at that than a bunch of downtown condos. Right. I'm just, that's just the way yeah. I am. Uh, Big Brew Jake said that he likes that they have made Hamilton look really gross from the highway so no one knows how cool it is <laughs> exactly. once you get down. Exactly. That's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. That's great. Well, I hope to come out to visit you in Hamilton. Please and meanwhile, do. please come here and visit Toronto anytime. Oh, I will. I know I, you live here, so we're going to make sure we I paint know. the town. Yeah. 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 With you, with you babe. I <laughs> yeah, love right you. on. Love you. Take care. That was fun. Thank you.